All right, so the frets are installed. I would have had a video of this if somebody didn't call me. My phone's on mute, and I don't have the vibrate on. I do that for battery purposes, just to save on battery. And uh, as I was putting in the frets, actually just getting started, my phone decides it wants to ring and stop the camera from recording. So I lost probably like an hour's worth of video while I would crunch it down to make it speed it up so you guys wouldn't be watching an hour's worth of it, of just installing the frets and crowning them, polishing them um, up. So the, right now they are like a old Cadillac bumper. Got a nice mirrored finish to them. The fretboard is very, very soft and very, very smooth. I mean, it's, this is will be really comfortable playing it. The frets themselves should be able to do a string bend on these with no problems. There's nothing for the fret or the string to grab on on these frets. So now it has a set of 16 inch radius frets on a 16 inch radius fretboard instead of having a 12 inch radius fret on a 16 inch. I don't know why or how that person, whoever did this, got away with doing it, but yeah. So one thing I didn't mention about uh, my last video is before I ended up taking the radius block and going over the neck itself without the frets on there to remove whatever burrs that were in the fret slots, I straightened out the neck before I did my radius sanding on the fretboard itself. So that's one thing I didn't mention in my last video. And then when I put the frets, new frets in, I give it another back bow again. It helps with installing the new frets. Straighten out the neck after that. And then I'll end up doing my radius sanding on the frets for leveling and stuff and uh, polishing and crowning and polishing and everything else. So now I'm just waiting for the Floyd Rose to show up, which would be sometime today. And I'm going to dry fit everything inside here first. And then run a couple of strings, one on each side, down the neck, just to make sure the position of it is correct. And then use my gauge that I use for that goes from the nut to the 12th fret, and then measure from the 12th fret to where the trim or Floyd Rose is going to be to make sure that the saddles are supposed to be where they're supposed to be. And I will video all that when it comes in. So if there's any problems with this thing, you know, the owner of it will know ahead of time uh, what's going on with everything before, you know, we go into the next step and we decide what to do, how he wants it done. So I know I'm gonna, probably going to have to fill in some wood over here to make it more sharp like this, make both sides look even. I'm just hoping that I don't have to fill these holes and kind of shift things over just a little bit. Because if you look at like this center line here, this center line here really doesn't match up with the center of the fretboard. So I'm hoping, you know, that works out okay, that there's no mistakes that were made. But I'm thinking like this one here is up a little bit higher. This one's a little bit lower. But this one here is more closer to center than what the other two are here. So we'll see how it works out when I get the Floyd in and uh dry fit everything. Sleeves will be going in. I will redrill these holes out just in case because there's two different size. Actually, there's a couple different size sleeves that go inside of here. Um, and I've got the drill bit for it. I'll drill these things out and slide the sleeve inside there. I'll have to probably pry it back out when I do the body. If it, if it works out perfect to where these are in the right position and I don't have to do anything, I can actually leave the sleeves inside of here because I'm not going to hit it with a router. All I want to do is fix this edge a little bit. And I always sink them down into the wood. You know, I don't leave a little bit sticking up. I sink them down even when I do, uh, when I put on like a, a tailpiece and tunematic bridge, I always sink the uh, sleeves down a little bit. So yeah, let's see, I'll get there. This will work out. So I looked up online, looks like you hit a volume and a tone here, but these holes don't really match each other as far as diameter and size goes. And then you got a three-way switch here, which is not that big of a deal, but I gotta clean up these holes a little bit uh, just to get them to size. And I think I'll throw in a couple of CTS pots for him when he ends up, um, when I send this thing back, that way he's got 
better pots than what the original electronics was in this. All right, so just wait for more parts to come in and get this thing going. All right, so what I have going on over here is I had to measure three different points of the fretboard to find center of the fretboard. And the way that I did this, I used my caliper. I measured edge to edge, not on top of the tape because the tape is going to throw you off because there's that much of a difference in the tape. And I don't know if the tape is uh, equal on both sides as far as thickness goes. So I measured the fretboard itself and then divided that by two with the caliper and then put my mark on the tape, did the same here and the same here to find center of the fretboard. So the reason why that I have this over here closer to this side is because I use my ruler. Now, let me move some of this stuff out of the way. The marks that I made on the tape are is exactly center of the fretboard, okay? Using the caliper, it's more precision, and you're able to uh, just dial things in a lot more. So what I ended up doing is I took a straight edge, put it on both edges, or right on top of the line. Then I used T-square, or kind of like a square, set that up against and I don't know if you could see that or not, but the line that I have drawn on the body has pretty much disappeared. And I remove this, and I make my mark right on the edge of where the point is on this piece right here. And then when I went from here, did the same thing. I put this over here, put this right here to make sure that I was actually on that line. And then I take this and I moved it over here. Moved it over here, removed my ruler, my straight line, and it made my mark over here. So that gave me exact center. And as you can see, I find something pointy that I could use. Oh, I'll use a pen. So right here is the line that the owner made. Right here is a line that the owner made. Now this line here is really close to being with the line that I made through here. So I kind of remeasured everything to mock things up. So if I use my template that is for a Floyd Rose for the mounts of it, and I line this up on top of my lines with his holes that he pre-drilled, he's pretty much damn right on the money with it. This one's just a little bit off, but this one's right on the money. So if I take my template, which is, he's supposed to have the same template as this. Now, this template's tricky, okay? There's nothing that says top and bottom on this. So you have to kind of look at the way these screw holes are. These screw holes are for mounting the template before you do your routing. Now, if you look at these, they're countersunk, tapered, or however you want to call it, for the head of like a wood screw to fit inside there to where the top of the head of the screw is not going to get in the way of the routing. So that would show you this is top. So I went and lined up this straight edge right here with the template and then put the template on top of my lines right exactly on top of my lines. And there's a little bit of double face tape on here from the last time I used it. And as you can see, there's a little bit of meat here that needs to come off. There's a little bit too much meat on the edge over here that was taken off, but it's not much. There's just a little bit of a lip there. And then if I move this to where the other template or part of the template goes, line up my lines again. Now there are lines going down this to show where center is and how it should be lined up. All right, now this side here needs to be trimmed off, but too much on this side here was trimmed off. Now if his Floyd Rose, he, he said he fitted inside of here and it fit really good. Um, if his Floyd Rose is different from an actual Floyd Rose, because he's using a shaller, I don't know how much of a difference as far as the body of the shaller goes, the, the bottom plate is, of how it's going to fit. So if I would take this template and start from scratch and make my own, uh, and then put his 
uh, Floyd Rose in a spot, it may be a little bit different. It might vary. So I don't know until I get the Floyd Rose in fit to see how this is going to work. But this, the holes here are pretty much good. Um, I have to find out if once I get the parts in today in the mail uh, that he sent me, find out if these holes are the right diameter for the sleeves that go inside of them because they're probably going to have to be opened up a little bit more i tried taking i've got some different side sleeves different size sleeves for different types of floyd roses and uh, uh i have a set that fit inside of here but they're small sleeves so once i get his i'll be able to find out exactly what i have to do and how i have to do it as far as measuring goes and mounting dry fitting however you want to call it so I'm not saying what he did is bad I mean he actually got pretty much close to the right position just needs some fine-tuning right now so if you look at where his lines were drawn here and here's my line and I circled my line now I kind of ended up looking at here and looking at over here and it's like without the tape here and it's like, well, wait a minute, this is going to come down, you know, somewhere around over here. And then this line here is pretty damn close. But the second line that's drawn over here is kind of like this one where it's a little bit closer, but not exact. So that's how I fit a Floyd Rose for the templates for cutting them out. Now, like I said before, as I, I got my 12 fret measurement from the nut and then I got my 12 inch measurement, the 12, <laughs> 12 fret measurement, sorry, to where the bridge is gonna go to find out where the saddles are gonna end up and if you'll have room for up and down. So I'm hoping I don't have to fill this whole thing and start all over. If it is, if I do, that's not a big deal. Um, hopefully that I could fill this and not have a problem where you know it shows cracking or anything around the edges of it and time where the wood it will expand and contract a little bit so until i get those parts in and i'll be able to figure this out a little bit more closer as far as looking at things having the physical part in my hand to fit well we're just gonna wait now all right so i cleaned up my workspace a little bit and a bunch of fret wire pieces and nibs all over the place and got a couple of packages today one of them being uh, he sent me all right so he sent, sent me the Howard's feed in wax for the fretboard It'll be the first time I try this stuff out I think I gotta send this back when I send the rest of this back but here is the shower Save this box. All right, let's see what we got to work with here. All right, well, pretty much kind of looks like a standard Floyd Rose. Oh, it's got some weight to it. There's the block. Yeah, so let's check this thing out with the guitar itself and you send me everything that goes with it. Oh good he did, yes. So these are the sleeves, huh? No, that's not the sleeves. Yeah, it is a sleeve. No, that's gotta be for the trim. Wait. No, the trim already has one. Hmm. So these are the sleeves. Oh good, because this is, he's going to need this. String retainer. Strings retainer. Alright. I don't know what this is for. Was it a cap? Oh no, this goes on the back. This goes on the back here. If I remember correctly, you put that on the back there and it keeps this in place. All right, so these are the small ones. Looks good. All right, so move that there, move that there. The rest of this I don't need. Well, actually, I do need 
No, I can't use. Yeah, I can. I do need to know. Did he put the shims in here? No. All right. Well, we'll work with what we got. Put this off to the side. <coughs> All right. So I have the guitar laying pretty much flat. Slide this into place. Need to trim a little bit more. I see with the sleeve here. It's a pretty tight fit. So, are these going to fit in here nice? And I'll be able to get them out. Yeah, I gotta measure these with the caliper, find my direct, the right size drill bit, and redrill the, both of these holes. This one had a little bit of a chip out, so we glued that into place. I gotta smooth that out. So let's kind of get started here. Where's my caliper at? I know these are not a 10 millimeter, I know that for sure. Yeah, let's get my drill bits out. Check out what we got here. Yeah, that's too big. This one here might be the right one. That's a little bit too small, so it's this one here. Pretty much. This is tapered. All right. And the way I'm going to do this is with my press. When it comes to stuff like this, I do not want to sit there and mess around with not being perfectly straight into the hole. I don't want to freehand it. One thing I like about these drill bits is they got a flat spot on them. So when you lock it into chuck, they're not going to kind of drift on you. shitty is the way I have this the camera kind of gets in the way all right so I'm gonna line this up with the hole pretty much center with it go to the other side here do the same thing camera so I'm not sure if the depth of these is right or not so I'm gonna check that out oh yeah the depth is perfect they're both the same yeah how about this one here yeah, the depth is good. All right, so they're tight. Just 
Hey there. All right, where's my pongo stick? Yes, I have a pounding stick. Make this a little bit above the body. Let me remove this cap off of here. Maybe that was in the way. Yeah, see this. Where are my glasses? fitting in the blades the way they're supposed to. Yeah, they are in the blade. But they seem a little bit too close together. Just a little bit too close together. They're kind of right here. Right there. So this side's not bad, but this side's hidden. Needs to be trimmed out a little bit more. And if I kind of like, shit, if I judge, oh boy. All right, so here's the true. Let's see how this is. Now I like to use fishing wire. It works out pretty good. These loose enough to turn by hand? Not really. I'm sure they're probably metric. Yep, they're metric. Alright, so I'm going to take the fishing line. Get it in there. Tighten it up a little bit. And another fishing line. about how that's fitting in there. It's like these need to be a little bit further apart. Just a little bit. Alright, so at the nut area and my ruler spacing from the fret, edge of the fretboard to where the, where are you going? Get back over there. Spacing from the edge of the fretboard to where the center of the nut is should be about an eighth of an inch on each side. And that's exactly what we're looking at, an eighth of an inch. So give me one <coughs> string. And I want an eighth of an inch. Excuse me. Eighth of an inch. One side of the fretboard. All right. So 
You've got an eighth of an inch right there. <coughs> a piece of tape. And now we're an eighth of an inch right here. This side of the fretboard. So the string spacing on each side of the fretboard at the nut is right now at an eighth of an inch off of each side of the fretboard. And we are, this side's closer, this side's a little bit further away. This side here is what? This side here is about an eighth of an inch. This side here is go to sixteenths. This side here is three sixteenths of an inch and this is about two sixteenths of an inch so we are this way a little bit like I said before using with the uh, and I still have to trim this out here so this side looks pretty good and if it's going to be moved over just a hair this way that side I can actually trim this side to make it look even these edges look alright this needs to be cut further back wow he cut too much further back on this side way too much further back shit I don't know if I could fill that or not I probably can with the right wood right wood glue alright so I need to pull the sleeves out and kind of like re rethink some of this. Pull the sleeves out. Shift everything has to go this way. These guys need to be spaced apart a little bit more. They're a little bit too tight. And I'll bring it down to show you too. So right now there's tension on these strings and that's kind of holding the uh, tremolo or Floyd Rose in place for right now. So let's show you what I got going on. All right, so up here, where the nut area is, it's supposed to be an eighth of an inch. Let's see here. If I can get it over there. I can't do this. In. So we got move that off to the side a little bit. There we go. So we got about an eighth of an inch right there, and. An eighth of an inch right there. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. This is the spot where it needs to be perfect. And as you can see, everything is kind of going that direction. And then over here, you can kind of see how close the screw is going that way. And then the screw over here is going that way as well, making this a little bit tighter. It's not sitting I mean, it's sitting in its slot, but it's not sitting in its slot correctly. These should be pretty much even with the circle instead of being close together, because that's going to cause problems when going backwards, because you're hitting, going backwards, you're going to hit that corner on each side on this fucking screw. So, I fix it. I get it good. All right, so I want to try something before I end up doing anything. We put this screw in place. Like I said, leaving it a little bit above the body. Let me zoom in on you guys. Maybe too much. All right, get you centered. All right, so this is what I want to do right now. I'm going to place the trim, Floyd, in this area here. So I don't know if you can really see this or not, but right now on each side of the screw, there is a gap on the plate. 
So the blades inside of the, let me fix this because this is not where I want it to be. There you go. So right now the blade is pretty much centered with the screw head itself. And there's a gap here and a gap here. Now if you were to go backwards with this, this gap will clear the head of the screw where it flares out and you should be able to go pull it backwards without having any problems. Now if you look at where this one is over here, you can kind of see it's not centered correctly with the hole. You know, here is center basically right here, about right there, and the screw is off to that direction a little bit. Now what it's giving me is once I get the where the nut is supposed to be. Eight of an inch on each side. Now right now what it's giving me with just one screw removed, I got it pushed up into the blade the way it's supposed to be. So it's giving me right now an eighth of an inch on that side and about an eighth of an inch on that side as far as where the strings are supposed to be on the bottom of the fretboard. So that is where I want it. So again, like I said, the screws were just a little bit tightened together a little bit. This one I could plug, re-drill it, have it move that way. If I take my template here and I line it up with, if I line it up with the lines that I made, leaving the one screw in and centering that screw, sorry if you're looking at the back of my head, Let me get some tape here, some good tape. Try to do this in a way where I'm not going to move my template. All right, so the template is locked in. Let me zoom out a little bit on you guys because it'll probably blur out if I try to zoom pretty close. All right, so you can see that screw is pretty much center with that hole. If you look at this one, you can kind of see it's a little bit off and needs to go uh, up a little bit more, at least up in that direction, I mean. And I got my lines lined up. Uh, maybe not. it might have moved a little bit on me. Oh, wait, I got to get perfectly center with the camera there that one's lined up that one's lined up so still that's centered put that in the middle that's off you can see by how much too it's not really a lot but it's enough to throw everything off so what I'm thinking leave this one alone pull that cork it and it should be all good when I redrill it and what I'm going to do is I'll use this template here. I don't know why I took it off. What I do is I'll use this template here, get a drill bit that's about the same size as that hole, the exact same size as that hole, and that's my starter into the cork. Then I remove this. I already have kind of a notch drilled into the wood, and then finish it off with the right size drill bit. So let's see how that works. All right, so I've got a little dowel rod right here. Made out of a piece of oak. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little glue on the dowel rod itself. Let's see, I've got it tapered a little bit to where it's bigger on one side and smaller on the other. So I'm using Type On 2 Premium Wick Glue. And I'm going to put some, if I can get it out of here, it's been a while since I used my wood glue. So the cap is probably a little bit clogged. Yeah, it's a little bit clogged in the cap, so I gotta clean that out. So what I'm gonna do here, say the tapered side goes in the hole. There you go. So what I'm gonna do is put some glue on this all the way around it.
insert that in my hole. Now I'm not worried about squeeze out or anything. Where is my pounding stick? There it is. Alright, so that hole is capped. Like I said, I'm not worried about any squeeze out or anything on that. I'll have to clean the glue off this cap some other time. So I put this stuff aside. Yeah, I have different sized dowel rods and I use oak. I know it's a little bit harder than the actual body would be, but it makes a nice strong makes a nice strong plug. So even if I carve a little bit off to the side of that, uh, I should be able to still cut into the drill into that without having any problems. And this I'll do on the uh, drill press in the garage, the mill. I'll end up doing that. All right, so as you can see, I kind of squared off the corners over here. I'm going to get rid of some of this particles. I chiseled it out a little bit to square it off. Got a piece of wood over here, a block that fits kind of snug, pretty snugly in there. And it's going to be flush with the body once I get it installed. So I'm going to start gluing this thing up right now. And what that's going to do is going to fill in the spots that are messed up to where I can recut them out again. Some glue on the bottom over here too. And after this I'll have to wait and let this dry. be about 24 hours before I can actually do anything else with this. So it's going to go up against this wall as well. I slathered glue in there quite a bit. Any squeeze out will be taken care of when the time comes to cut that out. I need to fill this in so I can get this fixed over here so it's even on both sides all right Put that in its spot I got some wood slivers that I want to put in some of these other spots here. Actually, I got a lot of wood slivers all right here. Cap up with actual wood. This side's not too bad. Yeah, this side's pretty tight, but I'm gonna stick some slivers in there anyways. All right, so that's pretty much in there. I'll take some CA glue and go over this area here with the crack once it's dry. So right now, I'm going to clamp this thing in. That should be enough to hold it in place for now. Alright, so until that dries, 
I can't do shit. 